Julie, we have the U.S. Women's National Team's preliminary She Believes Cup roster. 26 names on Vladko Ananovsky's list. 23 who will be on the final tournament team when the event kicks off on March the 5th. The name that jumped out to me the most, and I think most people, was Mallory Pugh. Back into the group uh, after being cut before the Olympic qualifying tournament. Were you surprised to see her back with the U.S. so soon? No, I wasn't surprised because Vlako had said Andonovsky before Olympic qualifiers when he left her off the roster, she will be back in. We know that the Olympic qualifying roster was a tighter roster of 20 players. Um, and now he's looking at 23 for this She Believes Cup, 26 who are in training camp. She hasn't made the final roster, of course, but I'm not surprised that she's back in with the 26. You know, you make it sound kind of like part of a plan there, right? The ins and the outs. For you, like as a player's perspective, think of yourself as a younger player. How would you have felt um, about kind of a plan being in place where you're in and out of a group as she seems to be right now? Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. And I think, um, you know, it, it probably is a blow to your confidence. And I think that's the very thing that Mal Pugh is struggling to find. And, and Vlatko has talked about her lack of consistency. I think that comes from confidence. So probably what this is going to do, though, it's going to motivate the heck out of her to be training harder, to be uh, fit, to be ready, to when she comes in, to be playing with a ferociousness that we haven't seen in the Mal Pugh of late. Because when she's playing well, Mal Pugh is taking players on. She's beating players on the dribble. She's looking confident. She's looking to get in behind defenses. And we just haven't seen that consistency from her. And this could be a little, a little reset, a little trigger for her. You mentioned what Vladko Andonovsky said after the decision to leave Pew off the Olympic qualifying roster. I want to call that up now to get into the kind of the specifics uh, of his decision to leave her off. And here's how he explained it. He said, Mal was competitive and she did well, but there were other players, I believe, that performed better. I want to be clear that she's a very talented player. She performed well and she has a big future in front of her. So I'm pretty sure if she keeps on developing going forward, she will be on this roster. For Mal, consistency is crucial for being on this roster. She needs to be more consistent in the day-to-day, -day, which is extremely hard. Julie, it's a catch-22, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like, how is a player consistent if they don't consistently play? Mm. Yeah. Yes, but you also have a lot of other forms where she can be doing well. NWSL, of course, um, getting a reset there with Sky Blue and how she's going to be playing with a new team. So I, I think that um, her, him bringing her into this roster, even though she hasn't made the final 23, but there's another chance where you get a look. So, I mean, all these things where he's going to give her the opportunity to have a look, um, but she's got to prove it by being a game changer. I mean, that's what they want out of that position. She's an attacking type player. He wants to see her assisting and scoring goals. Uh, and it's not an easy task by any means, but she has all the potential in the world to get there. Is that just kind of what it boils down to when there's so much competition around you, the, the final product effectively? Because Mallory Pugh, when I watch her, is a very exciting player, but with all the rest of the players she's competing with, there are just like mountains of goals and assists that you have to overcome to get into this starting lineup or even the bench. Absolutely, and that's... You know, th that's the burden you bear as a forward is you got to be a finisher. You got to be a game changer. You're not going to get many looks when you get to the Olympics and you're getting against these good teams. And so what can you bring on that, as Vlatko pointed out, consistent basis to actually influence a game, whether it's balls across, flighted in, whether it's taking players on. I mean, these are all the elements we've seen that she has if she can draw on those and bring them to the game in a consistent manner, then absolutely she's got to look. But it is tough because of the embarrassment of riches that is the United States front three. And then when you look at even the front six and who you're looking against, I mean, it's, it's a tall challenge, but we know that Mal Pugh has a lot, a lot of upside. Well, we're four or five months from the start of the Olympics. Um, depending on how you look at it, that could be a lot of time or, or very little. Do you think the She Believes Cup is make or break for Mal Pugh's Olympic chances in 2020? 
I don't think it's make or break, but she's got to show that she's moving in the right direction. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how she does with a new team this year. He's going to be looking at that, Black Wondonofsky, for sure. Um, so I don't think it all boils down to March, and especially because you just don't know where people are going to be injury-wise, health-wise, as you get to May, June, when he's got to actually be looking at, at naming that final 18 to go to the Olympics. I mean, and that is the challenge again, is it's a roster of 18 players versus 23 in a World Cup for the Olympics. It'll be 18 at the Olympics. It'll be 23 at the She Believes Cup, which begins on March 5th, the United States facing off against England. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.